NASA confirmed something massively frightening is happening with the moon. The moon, which is the biggest and brightest object in our night sky, stabilizes the Earth's axial wobble, which keeps the planet's climate relatively steady and improves the quality of life for all life. Also brought on by it are tides, which produce a rhythm that has served as a compass for people for countless years. After a body the size of Mars struck Earth several billion years ago, the moon most likely formed. Humans have only so far stepped foot outside of Earth's atmosphere on the moon, because no one knew there were other moons until Galileo Galilei found four moons orbiting Jupiter in 1610. The lone natural satellite of Earth is simply referred to as the moon. Hey guys, welcome back to Beyond Unknown. Today, we'll be taking a look at what NASA found massively frightening happening with our very own moon. Make sure to stick till the end of this video as we have a lot to cover. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like today's video, it helps us a long way. The word for the moon in Latin is luna, which also serves as the primary adjective for all things lunar. Less than one-third of Earth's width, the moon has a radius of 1,080 miles. The size of the moon is comparable to that of a coffee bean, if Earth were the size of a nickel. 384,400 kilometers away from Earth, the moon is typically 238,855 miles away. So between the Earth and the moon, 30 planets the size of Earth could fit. About an inch farther is the moon getting from Earth each year as it steadily recedes from it. The same hemisphere of the moon always faces Earth because of synchronous rotation, in which both the moon and Earth rotate at the same speed. The term dark side is sometimes used to refer to the far side, the hemisphere that humans can never see from Earth. Different regions of the moon are in the light or the dark at various periods as it orbits the Earth. From our vantage point, the moon goes through phases because of the shifting illumination. A full moon occurs when the sun completely illuminates the hemisphere of the moon that can be seen from Earth. When the moon's far side is fully illuminated and the side that faces us is experiencing night, this is when a new moon happens. The moon rotates or spins at the same pace or in the same time it takes the Earth to complete one full orbit around it, which is 27 Earth days. From our perspective, the moon appears to orbit us every 29 days because Earth is also moving, rotating on its axis as it orbits the sun. Meanwhile, according to images taken by NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, the moon is gradually decreasing over time, which is resulting in wrinkles in its crust and moon quakes. The moon doesn't have tectonic plates like Earth does. Instead, during the past several hundred million years, as the moon's interior has cooled, it has caused the surface to wrinkle as it gets smaller. The moon's brittle crust fractures, unlike the flexible skin of a grape that shrinks into a raisin. As a portion of the crust is forced up and over another nearby portion of the crust, this results in stair-step cliffs known as thrust faults. Thousands of cliffs, each measuring a few miles in length and a few yards in height, have now been dispersed throughout the surface of the moon. Since 2009, more than 3,500 of them have been captured on camera by the orbiter. The Lee Lincoln Fault Scarp, one of these cliffs, was a challenge for the astronauts on Apollo 17 in 1972. Eugene Cernan and Harrison Schmidt, who had to ascend it using a zigzag maneuver of the lunar rover. During this process, the moon is currently 50 meters skinnier. Furthermore, as it contracts, the moon actively causes moonquakes to occur along the faults. In order to compare the seismic data from the moon with the photographs captured by the orbiter, researchers re-examined their lunar seismic data. 28 moonquakes observed between 1969 and 1977 were revealed by data from seismometers installed on the lunar during the Apollo 11, 12, 14, 15, and 16 missions. Researchers compared the fault locations in the orbiter photos with the epicenter locations for those earthquakes. The activity along the faults is responsible for at least eight of the earthquakes. As a result, the likelihood of asteroid collisions or internal moon rumblings is ruled out. According to the experts, this indicates that the moon was contracting when the seismometers on Apollo picked it up. The journal Nature Geoscience published the research of the seismic data from the Apollo mission, as well as the analysis of more than 12,000 of the orbiter's images on Monday. The study's lead author and Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter Project scientist John Keller said in a statement that it is really remarkable to see how data from nearly 50 years ago and from the orbiter mission have been combined to advance our understanding of the moon 
and suggests where future missions aimed at studying the moon's interior processes should go. The moon's quakes, which indicate that it is actively changing, are still happening, according to the experts. According to Thomas Waters, senior scientist at the Center for Earth and Planetary Studies at the Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum in Washington, our analysis provides the first evidence that these faults are still active and probably producing moon quakes today as the moon continues to gradually cool and shrink. The Richter scale indicates that some of these earthquakes might be rather strong, measuring around five. The fact that some of the earthquakes occurred when the moon was at its greatest distance from Earth suggests that the tidal stress of Earth's gravity may have contributed to stress on the moon's crust. Apollo mission tapes that were lost have been found solving a lunar mystery. According to research author and assistant professor of geology, Nicholas Schmeer of the University of Maryland, you don't typically get to observe active tectonics anywhere besides Earth, so it's really intriguing to believe these faults may still be causing moonquakes. The algorithm that performed the reanalysis of the Apollo data was created by Schmeer. Landslides and boulders at the base of bright areas, which indicate recent activity, were another indicator the researchers found in the orbiter's photographs. The lunar surface darkens with time as a result of radiation and weathering. Bright patches or regions where recent activity has exposed sections of the lunar surface. These results, in Schmeer's opinion, underline the necessity of returning to the moon. Despite the fact that Apollo missions merely touched the surface, we learned a lot from them. We could make significant advancements in our knowledge of the geology of the moon if there were a wider network of contemporary seismometers. For research on a future voyage to the moon, this presents some incredibly exciting low-hanging fruit. Renee Weber, study co-author and planetary seismologist at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center, said in a statement that establishing a new network of seismometers on the lunar surface should be a priority for human exploration of the moon. This is so that humans can learn more about the moon's interior and gauge the danger moonquakes pose. When the space age started in the late 1950s, humanity first attempted to travel to a planet other than Earth's moon. Since then, spacecraft have been sent to the moon by more than 100 robotic explorers from over a dozen different countries. These robots were tasked with performing tasks that became progressively more difficult. NASA is currently preparing to establish a permanent lunar presence on the moon. The Artemis mission will launch the first male and female astronauts to the moon, establish a long-term human presence there, and pave the way for further manned exploration of Mars. The name of the program is derived from the Greek mythology character who is the goddess of the moon and Apollo's twin sister. Exploration Mission 1, now known as Artemis 1, is the first in line of progressively more difficult missions that will allow for human exploration of the moon and Mars. And that ends today's episode. We sincerely hope you enjoyed our video. If you did, please click on the like button and make sure you share it with your friends and family. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see even more. And thanks for watching.